Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. If you're interested in learning how you can make images which look a lot like these, then stay tuned because I have not one but two things for you. First up is a brand new stable diffusion model that I've released for free for anybody to use. And second is this video, which I give you a step-by-step -step guide into using this model to create amazing images just like these. The pictures you can see on the screen at the moment are just examples of the raw text to image output. You can, of course, fix these up afterwards with a little bit of in-painting or out-painting, should you wish. As you can see, you can create a wide variety of subjects and styles. It's just up to your own imagination. If image to image is more your thing, then these examples show how just with a basic prompt such as smile, you can still create some very interesting results. The lower your denoising strength, the more similar your output is going to be to the input image. So you can use that to create some rather strange hybrids as well. As you can see, image to image is great if you really want to capture a specific pose or if you want a broad sense of structure, color palettes or concepts from your initial image. And in case you're interested, do check out my Twitter for lots of examples there. For this video, I'm going to focus on showing you how you can build up a prompt for rodent diffusion in text to image. But if you'd like a more in-depth video on using image to image, then do let me know down in those comments. Probably a good time to like, share and subscribe as well. I'll be using the automatic 1111 web UI. If you're using a different method for your inference, then this is going to be slightly different. But for automatic 1111, all you have to do is download the model to your stable diffusion models directory. My models directory is shown on the screen at the moment. And there you can see inside it, it has a text file. Put stable diffusion checkpoints here.txt and that is where you should put your model. Links to the model, automatic 1111 and a whole bunch of other things are. Here's this customary down in the description so don't forget to check that out. Once you've got the model downloaded you'll just need to select it. Here in automatic 1111 you've got a stable diffusion checkpoint quick chooser up there and there you can see I've got my rodent diffusion 1.5 selected. If you've got that too, then you're ready to start prompting. The basic method is fairly simple. First, I start creating images in what I call a draft mode. This is simply a faster way to generate images. And the images don't look quite as good, but it does give me a general idea of how it's going to turn out. Next, I increase the image size. And finally, I do some upscaling and maybe play with some samplers just to get that perfect final image. I've got a basic set of starter words that I use for all my negative prompts. So let's just paste that in there now. These are, of course, as mentioned, down in the description. Everything else is pretty standard. Here I select the Euler A sampling method. I've got 30 sampling steps. Let's put that up there. And I'm going to pick a size of 512 by 512 just to start with and then generate. Let's see what sort of images I get out of this. Well, it's 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 weird, it's certainly different, but as you can see just by clicking generate quite a few times and letting all the images pop out, it is indeed perfectly random, but they are all sort of photography style images. Next up comes the most difficult part of all, picking your style and subject. Because I'm a rodent, I'm going to pick mm, humanoid rodent as my very fine subject. Even though it's called rodent diffusion, you don't have to pick a rodent as your subject, even if they are awesome. Feel free to have people, cats, houses, flowers, or whatever you want as your subject. When I click generate now with that humanoid rodent in my positive prompt, I get a nice rodent. It's not very humanoid, but I do have a rodent. For the style, you could enlist the help of either your imagination or a chatbot like ChatGPT and get it to give you some descriptive words for the particular aesthetic that you're looking for. Personally, I'm just going to add a few words which make it more like a photograph, which is quite colorful. If I click generate there, we can see I've got quite a colorful rodent. While I'm using a fixed seed here, you can of course select a random seed and just keep generating pictures to make sure that the words that you've entered will give you something that you're looking for. Here I can see, yes, I'm getting lots and lots of colorful rodents, which is exactly what I want for my first part of the prompt. Now, 512 by 512 is all very well and good and nice and fast, but I prefer 
different aspect ratios, either portrait or landscape. Now, one thing to note is if you make this a little bit too high, so let's go really, really high and pick something like 1728 there, then you will start getting duplicates. So this is perhaps not the best thing to do. There it is. It, it may be what you're looking for. You may be looking for duplicates, but personally, I like to lower it down a little bit. So I'm going to have a slightly different one there. So 768 by 640, I'll have a generate there. And that should give me something similar to what I'm looking for. There it is. I've got a, a fairly kawaii rodent there. You'll also notice that the generation time will take a little bit longer as you increase the size, as well as the image changing quite dramatically. Now you may be thinking, cool, that's it then. I can pick my subject. I can use chat GPT to give me words for aesthetics and then I'm done. Uh, not quite. No, we're only about halfway there because next up is my almost favorite thing in Stable Diffusion, Composable Diffusion. I've made a video about this before, so hopefully there should be some sort of thing appearing which you can click on if you're interested in that. But basically it's a way to blend diffusions all in one prompt. All you need is the keyword and in all caps and essentially you're generating another image and blending it into the other ones. You can have as many ands as you like but for each and you may need to lower the guidance scale just a little bit. As you can see for this example I've added a bit of humanoid rodent knight onto the end there and I've also lowered the guidance scale a little bit too. If I click generate then we can see the new image there. Little rodent and he's sort of like a little knight. Okay, we're starting to get there. If we take a look at this grid of guidance scale versus steps, we can see quite a dramatic change across the board. It's worth running such XY grids yourself as you can get a real feel to what the best settings are for the image that you want to create. You can, of course, add more prompts to fuse as many concepts together as you like. I like using loads, so here is one that I've added a load of different things to. Here I've got cinematic film stills and depth of field and concept art and vignettes and rats wearing ethereal intricate armor, all that sort of stuff nicely tied in together. There we go. We've got quite a cool looking rodent there wearing some armor. So using all those ands can increase the quality of the image and get you a quite nice looking output. But there is still more we can do because if we tick the high res fix box, then we got a whole load of new options to play with. Here we've got an upscaler, lots of different options there. Personally, I'm quite happy with the latent ones. I've tried a couple of the others. It doesn't seem to make much of a difference. So just play with them yourself and see what you like the most. But the one that you'll be really interested in here is the upscale by, or if you want to set a specific width and height, you can do that there. The really important thing here as well is the denoising strength, as it says there, determines how little respect the algorithm should have for the image's content. At zero, nothing will change, and at one, you'll get an unrelated image. I like it about 0.45. That seems to upscale the image nicely, makes it very similar to your original, doesn't change too much, just makes it a lot bigger. And there he is, looking nice and majestic with his headpiece on there. A very nice picture of a rodent indeed. You can get some very nice outputs if you increase the denoising strength a little bit. Here I've put the denoising strength up to 0.65, but one of the downsides of that is the image can change quite a little bit. So rather than the nice rodent we've got there with his almost perfect ears and rather shining armour, what we get instead is a rodent who has rodent ears. So there you go, his ears have actually turned into rodents and that's all because we just changed the denoising strength a little bit. Another thing you can do is change the sampler. My second favorite sampler is DPM++ 2SA. So you can switch to that and also increase the sampling steps as well. Try and get a slightly higher quality image. Let's have a look at that one. And there he is with the new sampler. As you can see, he's got some slightly different headgear on there, but he still looks just as fine, even though he is slightly different due to the change in sampler. Once you've got a prompt that you're happy with, another thing you can do is simply change the subject. Here, I've changed the rodent in each case for either female or woman. And if we do that, then we get a fairly similar image, but instead of the rodent, we get a woman. And there she is in full high res. Or, in case you're wondering how I generated the thumbnail, it could change the woman for a hipster. And there she is, 
with her glorious eyes. I do think those glasses look rather cool. And there you go. You can now make loads of cool high-res images just by choosing your subject, picking a style, adding lots more things with composable diffusion, changing the aspect ratio for the images, and then finally upscaling for your full high resolution render. Plus, if you're interested in learning more about composable diffusion, then do have a look at this video.